late at night when all the world is safe within their dreams i walk the shadows late at night an empty feeling creeps within my soul i feel so lonely so i go into the darkness of the night all alone i walk the streets until i find someone who is just like me looking for some company Children of the night mm -hmm. Children of the night Late at night A restless feeling takes control of me And I just can't fight it Late at night, I feel the need for someone who, like me, needs understanding. So once again, I'll search the darkness of the night all alone. I'll walk each street until I find someone who is just like me, looking for some company. Oh, yeah, yeah, children of the night. Oh, children of the night, children of the night. Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good Sunday morning to y'all, whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. And I'm going to welcome y'all to the mental house with me, your host. You know, that song by the Stylistics is just befitting of, um, let's see, who wrote it? I think it was Jonathan Noli, Notley, Linda Creed, y'all remember Linda, Thomas Bell, um, and, um, it was a song that a lot of y'all can relate to, a lot of y'all can't. If you've ever had any kind of addiction, whether it's a sexual addiction, whether it's a drug addiction, um, or whether just living the nightlife, um, sometimes that's what you find yourself being involved in. You become a child of the night. And... Sometimes the people that fall into that category are discarded by society. There are all kinds of people that make up the children of the night. And um, I want y'all to bear with me for a minute. Because as a lot of y'all know, and as I've stated before, this Jeffrey Dahmer um, series has definitely re-triggered uh, my PTSD. I didn't know just how much until I began to uh, think about Glenda Cleveland. Um, I also, you know, because I, I thought about how um, Pamela Bass, I believe that's her name. She was the real Glenda Cleveland. And I know I'm all over the place with this right now. Y'all just bear with me. Um, and I began to think. Um, of that whole situation 
with Conorak sent us some phone. For some reason, that came to my mind. And it just stayed played in my heart. Because I know that Glenda died of a broken heart. I've talked to Glenda many times. I've talked to her, either her niece or her daughter. One of them used to work at the Wendy's over on East Capitol Drive. And um, I used to ask them how she was. She was too young to die, in my opinion. Um, but the stress and all of the... I begin to think about the victim is what I'm trying to say. Everybody that was affected, not just the one who were the people who were just out and outright killed. I began to think about the effects and I realized that I was one of them. I realized that my friends um, and those of us who worked for the county or the city at that time, um, It was um, it was so freaking crazy. You know, I want to give my shout out, my condolences again, not my shout outs, my condolences again to all the actual victims of Jeffrey's freaking um, madness. And I also want to let them know that I do understand how they can feel about being re-traumatized, you know, because all of us are part of that. Except yours may be to a little higher power because, you know, this was an immediate family member of, of yours. And I know how I'm still hurting right now when I think about mm, the people or the young man that killed my brother. Um, and every time I think about it, my heart hurts. But there's also... There's also a healing in the pain. And I know that don't may not sound like that right now. If we've been through, as black people, slavery. We've been through chattel slavery. We've been through lynching, Jim Crow. Being beaten, being humiliated. Having our children cut out of our stomachs and thrown on the ground and stomped in the head. We've had all main, all types of violence perpetrated against us. Jeffrey Dahmer, in my opinion, is just another pawn in the scheme of white supremacy. In an unjust world, those are the things that we have to deal with. So our fight has to still be every freaking day against Inhumanity and injustice. And your people represent, every time I open up my mouth, I wanted to represent Earl Lindsay. I want to represent all the people, Tony Hughes. Um, I just, you know, I can go down naming them all. <sighs> Doxeter, all of y'all. Turner, but you have joined the ancestors in another ram. Unfortunate, it's unfortunate how you got there, but you are now with the the ancestors. And with that being said, it's up to the living. To really keep their memory alive. And not sweep it under the rug. Um, and sometimes you're going to be re-traumatized. Every time I, I see a movie with slavery. Or in, in, the, in the brutality of Jim Crow. Or when I see a movie of. Uh, how they shot Dr. King down. Even the powers that be when they I was four years old. Or five years. I uh, was three, four. When they shot down Bobby. Uh, I mean Robert Kennedy. Those are all traumatic events. And don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to minimize shit. Because like I said. I am. I have three family members who have murdered. And I'm the last person. That don't understand your pain. 
Sometimes we do stuff for the good of the whole. I don't want nobody to ever forget y'all loved one. And if it means that y'all got to hurt for a minute. To show some love to your family member that's not here no more. I ain't talking about these stupid people that's making memes. Those are all people that probably would roll with Jeffrey anyway. You ain't talking about them. You got yin and yang, okay? You have negative and you have positive. The dirt is what make the rose grow, okay? So don't paint the. I try to stay above the negativity. And if they making memes and talking about they show would love to have dated Jeffrey, all that kind of crazy stuff, that ignorant ass shit, well then, okay, I wish he would have dated you. Because then maybe he would have cut your head off and put you in the acid. Okay, cool. But for those of us who um, understand what type of aberration it was then and still now today, we're still underserved we're still mistreated we still have police that serve as an occupied force in our community that don't do shit but look for reasons to lock us up because like i said in that last video truly i truly believe that laws are just to keep black people in check that's it that's it that's why you can have a white person and a black person commit the same crime. And the white person, they both get arrested. The black person go to jail. The white person go home. Just like you saw that judge that did all that slick shit for Jeffrey Dahmer to leave the court. Oh, we don't want to ruin your life. You know, that's only for blacks. They're the only ones that we want to ruin their lives so they can't get a job, so they can have a record, so they can have a felony. And then you want to wonder why they continue to act out. Because they're so damn tired of being mistreated. So god darn tired of being mistreated by these pink people. That enough ain't enough that you mistreat us. You got to eat us too. And then you got to make jokes and stuff. And, but like I said, there's a special place in hell for people like that. It really is. And there's a special place in hell for you if you got a hard heart. If you are racist, if you a person that think that because of the color of your skin make you better than somebody else, I hope you go to hell. And I hope, and I'm just telling, I'm just being real with you. I'm coming from the Bible. I hope God spite all my enemies. All of them. All, every single one of them. And you know who you may be. Because if you hate me because of the color of skin, which I can't have no, I had no control over that. But because of your insecurity and your narcissistic, crazy, psychopathic nature. That you adore who I am. And you don't know how to show it. So what you do is you beat me down and you and you mistreat me for it. But I'm the one running your country. I'm the run that is is uh, 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 and have produced everything that you uh, cherish today. From music to literature to religion. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I think a lot of y'all don't know that. You need to go back and see what the, Alex, the, the library in Alexandria was about. Medicine. M Hotel. But because you refuse to recognize and acknowledge who I am, you decide to do a, a plagiaristic role that has lasted for generation after generation. You've taken the truth. You shit all over it, plagiarized it, and then represented it back to society as truth. And then the dummies believe it. Especially the ones that don't want to do no research on their own. And out of all those lies and aberrations, come another aberration like Jeff Dahmer. That's what it is. But what I wanted to do is I want to ask the million dollar question 
million dollar question. Do you guys think that Jeffrey Dahmer was racist? Because I, I struggle with that. Um, sometimes I don't really think he was racist at all. I think he was an opportunist. And I think that he was so... Some, sometimes I said I feel this way. So there's a dual feeling inside of me. The yin and yang. Sometimes I feel like, hell no. He just... He could. His father said it was over with his grandmother. He couldn't live out there in West Alice no more. With all in that, in that pretty neighborhood, he couldn't afford that. The only thing he could afford was something down there in those projects or those uh, apartment buildings. And so he went with what he could afford, and um, he knew that. He could prey off the most vulnerable. I think there's a certain body type that he liked. And then there's certain certain reasons that I believe that um I, I know this. I don't want to sound like Marjorie Taylor Green. So let me make sure I, I clarify this. And then sometimes I feel like when you go to the army, they do all these extensive studies on what kind of person you can be. You know, or engaging in combat or not engaging in combat. Um, they look at your ability to detach from situations. I think in some cases, they look at your ability to kill. All those things. And so when I look at a person like Jim Jones, who was also... Dishonorable discharged I believe from the army Or one of those uh, uh, services Just like Jeffrey Dahmer Is it like You know is it is it like they almost have the okay To not the okay But you know the pro proclivity To plant themselves down In situations where People that Are in the In the um Authority to judge their mental state Know that these people aren't You know something is wrong with them But they don't follow through And they don't keep up with these people And then they These people You know plant themselves In black communities And it makes me wonder sometimes Damn is that the plan Is that the plan For you to take us out like that And put people that are so a Crazy and, uh, you know, and then I begin to feel crazy because I'm like, why am I thinking that? Because I don't know. And nobody knows. But we can all speculate as if he was a racist or not. We, you know, so I think that's my question for today. Um, and like I said, that, that question was... Uh, the catalyst to that question was thinking about Glenda Cleveland. And may she rest in peace. She died in 2011. And um, she, it was too young. It was too early. And she stayed on the west side too. But I, I want to know. I want to know what y'all think. So those are my heartfelt thoughts. About the situation as I begin to, you know, it's a little healing in this as well. Because, you know, sometimes we bury things. Sometimes they feel so bad that if you was a part of it, you, you don't know where to go with these emotions. But I think it is necessary. And I think there's a whole generation that don't know what we went through. And I think that. Those of us who are past 50 We're like the old walking libraries And we have a responsibility uh, To those who have ears Let them hear And those who want to know what really happened From a um, Not just a spectacle point of view But from a personal point of view From people that were there Then I'm going to respect that And I'm going to give them what they want so, with that being said, you guys, I want to ask that question 
And I'm going to leave it out there. And I hope that y'all comment on it. Do you think Jeffrey Dahmer was a racist? And I, I, um, I'll go by the response to this to see if we should, um, well, just, just put your comment below, okay? If you like what you hear, please subscribe to the channel. Please join the channel. Please donate to the channel if you feel. And if you can't do any of those, then I would really, really appreciate it if you could just watch the commercials. Because every little bit helps the channel, um, YouTube has made so many changes that, you know, we have to go to independent plan platforms if we want to continue to make content. So all we can ask of our subscribers is to watch the car I mean, cartoons, is to watch the commercials and continue to support in ways that you can so we can have dialogue with one another. Okay. All right, be blessed. God be with you. If you like what you hear, please like and please subscribe and share my channel. And guess what, y'all? I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.